20 minutes of Sunday, August 16, 2015. This is Peter John of Emergency Radio. No DX today, but some news of WIA. Our data segment for this time will move to tomorrow, Monday, when we will use the command line mini modem program. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. International news, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. Satellite frequency coordination. For some years, the International Amateur Radio Union, IARU, has sought through its group of volunteer satellite coordinators to assign appropriate frequencies to be used by space satellites operating in the amateur bands. These efforts have generally been successful, allowing satellites to operate without undue interference to each other and to other services using the bands in question. The IARU role in coordination of frequencies is supported by ITU. IARU is aware of a few satellites already operating in amateur bands which are causing difficulties in parts of the world as the frequencies they use do not appear to accord to existing band plans. IARU has now become aware of plans to launch a series of satellites where the frequencies proposed appear to conflict with existing IARU band plans in some parts of the world. IARU is investigating how this has arisen and is discussing the issues with the parties involved. The latest IARU monitoring system newsletter reports on 7 MHz splatter from Radio France International and the seemingly endless story of Driftnet buoys on 28 MHz. The International Amateur Radio Union Monitoring System IARUMS Region 1 newsletter can be read at the link in this WIA News Text Edition. Going back in time, time may seem to stand still, at least for a few moments, at WWV, the National Institute of Standards and Technologies HF radio station in Fort Collins, Colorado. The Time and Frequency Standard Station is celebrating the completion of its successful first year with a restored vertical dipole, one it had stopped making use of in 1977. Last year, the 25 MHz signal went back to transmitting at the antenna's original location for the first time on an experimental basis. The experiment, it seems, worked just fine. Matt Deutsch, N0RGT, WWV's lead engineer, told ARRL that when the 25 MHz broadcast returned last year, a broadband monopole was the antenna the station first used, but the monopole was eventually paired with the station's 2.5 MHz standby transmitter. That's when the decision was made to resurrect the older vertical dipole, which, he said, after restoration, now looks just as it looked in 1977. He said the vertical dipole has a lower angle of radiation than the broadband monopole did, and now has a transmitter of its own, radiating 2.5 kilowatts. The signal provides a way for radio operators to check their frequency calibration or determine the exact time of day, and can also help with propagation conditions on both 10 and 12 metres. There's nothing like sitting at the window with a nice hot cup of coffee and watching the world pass by. Now the astronauts on the International Space Station can do just that. Instant coffee has always been available on the ISS, but now for the first time, it can be enjoyed freshly brewed. Italian retailer Lavazza and Argotech, the provider of space food for European astronauts, have joined forces and created the Espresso, a device that overcomes the unique challenges of brewing coffee in space. Quoting here, Making coffee in space isn't easy, according to Argotech officials. This is the first capsule espresso machine that can work in the extreme conditions in space for the principles that determine the fluid dynamic characteristic of liquids and mixtures are very different from those typically found on Earth, unquote. The microwave-sized box uses capsules similar to a Keurig machine to brew the caffeinated beverage as well as other hot drinks such as Cafe Lungo, tea, hot chocolate, and broth. And because no self-respecting coffee lover would ever drink their latte with a straw, a special plastic 3D printed cup was designed to cope with the demands imposed by microgravity. So now when you're sitting at your window with a hot cup of joe watching the world pass by, you can delight in the fact that maybe somewhere way up in the sky, an astronaut is doing the exact same thing, except the view up there repeats every 90 minutes. Reporting from Shawnee, Oklahoma, I'm Mike Askins, KE5CXP for the Amateur Radio Newsline. From Australia, this is VK1WIA.